On October 26, the U.S. military led an invasion in Syria and killed the leader of ISIS, Baghdadi. Now, some civilian people are coming forward, people who informed the United States military and saying that civilians had been killed. We have informants who are the ones who are attesting to this or reporting it. And I learned this from NPR. So there are three people I'd like to talk about. But first I'll mention that 1,346 civilian deaths have been admitted by the Pentagon in the fight against ISIS. Now while it's understand that in full-fledged war, civilians will die, I don't think it should be acceptable when the United States goes to save other people and to ostensibly, by extension, save us halfway around the world if they're going to kill civilians. Now, right-wing people, insensitive people, will say, what do you want? If you want America to defend the world, civilians are going to die. When we don't want to kill people, such as airline pilots and passengers, pedestrians on the street, people in shipyards building large ocean liners, when we don't want to kill people as we send them into space, we manage not to kill people. Now, yes, those are not war situations. But that's the point. You shouldn't create death where death is trying to be prevented. It negates the point. Killing civilians negates the point of fighting for freedom. It doesn't make sense to go and save people and then kill thousands and thousands of people. Because in the lives of the thousands of people and their families will be the question, I wish you hadn't come, why did you come? Of course, they want the bad guys dead too, but you have to find a way, we have to find a way to eliminate dangerous factions without killing the people we're trying to protect. Even if it is found through every study and every expert and every model to be impossible, there should be a goal of making sure that there are zero casualties, not just platitudes about it. Because again, it doesn't make any sense and this shames us. Khaled Mustafa Kermo, 27. Khaled Abdel Majid Kermo. They were both killed, 27 and 30 years old, riding in a van, hit with heavy machine gun fire, artillery from a battle helicopter. One of these young men was being carried by the driver of the vehicle, their cousin, Barakat Ahmad Barakat. He was carrying one of them in his arms when his hand was shot off. And obviously, the bullets that took his hand off probably took the head of his cousin. He can't use his left hand either because of severed, severed muscles. He's a farmer. He said in the NPR report that he makes less than a dollar a day. Now he's handicapped. This is inexcusable. It's inexcusable. We are not doing people a favor by killing their civilians even if we're doing it in the prosecution of combat to kill someone who is a threat to them. If you think this is okay, then what number do we stop at? To kill a bad guy, can we kill hundreds of thousands of people? We've done that. We killed hundreds of thousands of people in Iraq to go after Saddam Hussein, someone we didn't have to go after. And what did that give us? ISIS. Now a Pentagon official former Pentagon official named Mark Galasco, speaking to NPR, said, if the average American thinks that in the prosecution of such missions to save us from bad people, from terrorists, if people think that civilians have to die, he wants Americans to think again, because what happened to the two Kermo cousins and what happened to Mr. Bakrat 
has happened to hundreds of thousands of people. And what this Pentagon official said, Mr. Bar Garlasco, was, if it's someone in your family, that might encourage you or others in your family to go and join a paramilitary organization. I mean, and let's put things in the proper context here. We call them terrorists. They think they're freedom fighters. I'm not talking about ISIS. ISIS was a marauding band of religious maniacs. But most of the people who join these movements are not just joining them for religious reasons. Religion is the glue that keeps them hardened and connected to the movement. The inspiration is politics. The inspiration is that America is like the empire in Star Wars and they'd like to blow up that damn Death Star. And we give them reason to want to do so when we kill their family members who are innocent. I'm talking to you, fellow Americans, the rational ones, the ones who, like me, have been around the world and understand other cultures and know that different people feel and think differently. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed, and I've been ashamed since I was in high school when I learned about Vietnam. And I was ashamed after that when I saw what Reagan did to Latin America. And I was ashamed when I saw what the Bushes did to Iraq. We have to stop this shit. We can't be killing innocent people anymore. There's no excuse for it, or we shouldn't go in the first place. You have to run your country the way you would run your family. You don't tell your kids to go shoot at the neighbor's house because someone who lives in there is a son of a bitch. The police don't shoot first and ask questions later. The decent police, the mentally healthy police, the well-trained and intelligent police, anyway. 